have an engagement session or want to get into couple photography, in this video I got three tips and you're coming with me behind the scenes. Let's get it. Hey, what's up? I'm Omar Takori. I'm a freelance photographer and this channel is all about helping you take better photos. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe. Also, make sure to check out the show notes and links in the description below to the gear I used, uh, some other tips or anything I forget in this video. Also, hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I try my best to post on a weekly basis and I've been failing air time. So this video is actually a part two to a previous video I did on shooting engagement shoots or photo shoots and uh, I'll link that in the YouTube card as well as the description below. Um, in this one, I wanted to give another three tips and the, the first one I did three C's. This one I'm also gonna do three C's. And so the first tip in shooting engagement shoots is compliment. I actually got this tip from a friend of mine um, who shoots in Denver, Colorado and uh, sh something she's really good at is actually complimenting the couple and it's very encouraging on the couple's end when uh, they're doing something that's to them may be intimidating. Getting pictures of you is usually not a normal thing for most people and, uh, and it, it's also a big thing like you're capturing this season in their life which is their engagement which isn't going to last forever because hopefully they get married, right? But, um, but just throughout your photo shoot, you want to say, good job, I love what you guys are doing, I love that, oh my gosh, that's so, that's so cool, do that again, or whatever you can do to just continually compliment the couple, uh, and you'll probably get better photos that come out of that. Tip number two is actually a funny one because it's not, uh, it's not a real tip, and I just thought of it trying to keep with the three C's. Uh, tip number two is cards, and what do I mean by that? I mean that when you are shooting the couple, uh, you want to make sure you're shooting landscape and portrait. So especially if you have like a cool shot set up and this scenery is dope or whatever you are uh, in this photo shoot to make sure that you're shooting both uh, directions with your camera because the couple will then use their photos for cards. It would suck that they found a photo they loved and the card layout or whatever they wanted to go with was a portrait style but the image that was taken was landscape. So that's just something to keep in mind while you're shooting is just to constantly keep tilting or shifting your camera from landscape to portrait and so that was tip number two which is cards. So so far number one we have compliment to constantly compliment the couple throughout your photo shoot. Number two is cards continually to shoot portrait and landscape uh, throughout the photo shoot. And number three is candids. And one of my favorite things to do in photography in general is to just capture unposed shots, right? And I think uh, a lot of people's desires too is just to catch them in their element. Maybe not necessarily so do they express it all the time, but usually like uh, when I'm shooting a couple, they'll show me some of their ideas like, oh yeah, I started a Pinterest board, which is dope. I use that as reference. Uh, but usually it's like cool shots that are just in their element. and. There's a few things I like doing in order to get candid shots. One of which is, you know, you can have, uh, you know, set them close to each other and have, uh, let's say the guy or the girl whisper in the other guy's ear and just let them know like, yo, whisper whatever you want in her ear or in his ear. And sometimes that like something comes out of that and just you're, you're ready to go. And so you're just capturing those moments. And also just, I, I love allowing uh, couples to just like go for it. Like, hey, you guys, just have your own time real quick. Uh, and sometimes they just do their own thing. Uh, another friend of mine told me she encourages their couples to like twirl around, have them twirl around or dance like in this awkward spot, but dance and like something quirky can come out of that. And then you could shoot some cool pictures. And so that wraps up the three tips, the three C's, a total of six. So make sure if you haven't already checked out the first video, uh, link in the card. And let's get into the photo shoot. If you find anything helpful, if you have any questions throughout the photo shoot, make sure to put that in the comment section below and I'll do my best to reach out and uh, answer those questions. This is kind of like a piggyback from the candid thing. So I just had Adrian and Whitney walk up the hill and um, just wanted them to engage and then I was just set to go. And I think another thing is uh, symmetry. If you notice, they're very they're in the center of the road. I'm in the center of the road shooting them. And anytime you get an opportunity to shoot a symmetric photo, like like you're on a bridge or you're on a road, uh, it always is more pleasing to the eye when your image is symmetrical. So this example is just an example of me moving around. Uh, found a, just a cool spot with a decent background, and I'm shooting up close, and then I'm also backing up and just getting the scene. 
and don't be afraid to like keep them in a position and you just move around and that's usually okay too because it produces more photos which more photos they're more happy so really quick this picture was intended to be able to be used uh and use text on the left side so always thinking about the card thing uh whether you turn a landscape or portrait but also using the rule of thirds and like putting them off to the right or left to allow uh room for text other than the card the engagement session is used for print material whether that's the sign-in book that they have at their wedding but also their website and so getting shots even on the way to another spot or location uh, capturing those things that's not just always their face but detailed shots and um, in motion shots and even shots that they don't think you're shooting couples find it surprised when I send them a photo and they're like oh dang I didn't even realize you were shooting during that time but then they super are grateful because it was a cool shot nonetheless one thing I try to think of and I think my wife is better at than I am is props and you know as a photographer there are things that you know that can spice up a photo and you don't want to put more pressure on the couple per se uh, if you just want them to just show up and be ready to go but like this was our blanket that me and Amanda own in our home and you know it's totally fine to bring things that you think would add to a shoot you know whether that's like you're at a thrift store and you find a cool chair um, but just to know it's like it's all good investment because you know these photos speak for yourself and it's like whoa, this like couple you know there's more than just them in the photo and just thinking little right. things like yeah, I mean no, if it was like yeah, a picnic just, or like, like I said a chair it's just like, cool things and like these photos these candidates came out of the blanket oh, yeah. like the blanket's a pretty gnarly centerpiece in this photo but like super cool vibes right like this is things you see on Pinterest which we all trying to get on Pinterest just playing these are the dope ones. And then the ever so famous, These the creeper the shot, you know, obviously one of my favorites. You'll probably see this in every photo shoot I do or video I do. Uh, and that's just getting behind something to provide some depth to an image and uh, allowing it to be blurred out. Or sometimes you can even focus on that if the couples. But this, these are cool shots. I always look for these to be printed in homes because, you know, there's so much more going on in the image than just whoever's in subject or, or in focus. And again, this is like the whisper candid joint where, you know, have the guy whisper in the girl's ear. And I don't know what Adrian said to Whitney, but, you know, came you out go. for yeah, some like cool that. photos. <laughs> All right, that's great. And, and yeah. still being at this log spot because I really liked it, you know, using it different angles, shooting up and down. Uh, and then just, just changing the different angles that you have on a spot. You know, you can just really hone in on the perspective of a shot being taken. And I think, you know, shoot more than less and, um, you know, get different vibes. Here I got, I told them to be a little bit more serious. And then uh, just getting these things that you don't know, you know, they're not moving and I'm getting so many shots out of this spot. So just use the most out of your spots. Uh, and usually that, what can help is definitely just your perspective on the angle in which you're taking a photo. This right here is a legit example of me not knowing where our next spot is. And, you know, like when somebody wants a vibe, like they wanted woods and stuff, I was like, cool, let's go up to the mountains. I don't have never been to this exact spot. So I think one of the C's that I could probably could have tagged on earlier in the video was confidence and just be confident and trust your eye, you know, and like even if you're in a season of developing that and you're not sure if you even have the, the quote unquote the app, the eye. Um, just trust your judgment and you know couples are always open for creativity um, if you're not sacrificing too much time especially if you're losing light in the day and stuff but be free to be creative and and just be confident wherever you are another shot I think is like a must-have when you're doing engagement shoots are these super intimate shots very very up close and if you're shooting prime you know if you're at if you can go down to like 1.8 or even 1.4 to get those intimate shots and like focus on just the hand or just the mouth and the rest can be kind of like blurred out but those intimate shots are really cool and I think um, really showcase you know couples love I totally think the creeper shot can work in this scenario like I'm pretty far back and you know there's still so much going on in the photo but again just allowing objects to be in front of your shot I think make for really cool photos and that'll just be something I'm always pushing our hashtag the creeper shot 
And then I would say my last tip is to just know your camera. You know, I think in photography, lighting is everything. And when you're using the sun to your advantage and it starts to go down, to just know how long you can push your camera and to be okay to know that, you know, I can kind of push my camera and my, my camera can shoot this thousand ISO and I can go this low on my shutter. And then also raw images are pretty forgiving when you want to bump up the exposure. But just to know that, like, you know, you can see it's getting pretty dark, but I know that I can really, if I want to, I can push you know my images to like 6400 and yes it'll provide some grain but it still is not bad and so just to keep that in mind to know your camera and how far you can push it so there you have it what do you think of the photo shoot what do you think of the photos let me know in the comment section below also if you uh got any value out of this video make sure to hit that like button and if you have any ideas of any future videos or you need help with tips on uh, shooting on your camera particularly or uh, just anything in general, let me know in the comment section below. I think the best videos come out of the comments that come out of these videos. And other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, catch me on Instagram or follow, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next video.